how to make a data pack for Minecraft. Minecraft is really customizable. Game rules were added in late 2012 with the release of Minecraft 1.4.2's Pretty Scary update, allowing you to enable and disable certain game mechanics, such as whether or not you drop all your items when dying, or whether or not mobs had the ability to destroy blocks. Mods that add or change mechanics also exist, such as Forgery, which adds a slew of new optional tweaks to the game, like disabling that stupid farmland trampling mechanic that I hate. Why? Unfortunately though, sharing modded features with friends isn't really possible without either playing on a mod pack's dedicated server, like my own resurvival mod packs, or a lot of fiddling with the nightmare of remote server hosting and port forwarding. Oh. <laughs> Unless you're willing to pay for a server from a company like Bisect Hosting, of whom my affiliate link and code will net you a nifty discount on any servers you buy from them, link in the description below. And beyond that, you're still only limited to the game rules and config options provided to you, regardless of if your game is modded or not. So, what do you do if you want to modify the game in smaller ways, without relying on Mojang or modders to add new options for you? Boy oh boy do I have just the thing for you. Data packs. Next, you're going to say, what's a data pack? What's a data pack? Huh? Well, my dear viewer and Theo, a data pack is kind of like a mod that doesn't need to modify the base game's Java code. There's no need for extra launchers, executables, compilers, cretins, or anything else of the sort that fundamentally meddles with or adds onto the game's code. Meaning, no matter how you use them, data packs are technically completely vanilla. Yum. By adding onto or overriding Minecraft's data files, written in the .json format, Jason! you can add or modify all manner of elements, including, but not limited to, advancements, item recipes, loose dropped by mobs, loot found in chests, game mechanics, structures like villages or outposts, biome generation, and even entire dimensions. Let me repeat that. All this and more without modifying the base game at all. So, you could turn Minecraft into an FPS, and your buddy Eric could join it from his vanilla launcher with no issues at all. Pretty nuts, right? I think you're nuts. Now, I am by no means the guy who can tell you how to make Terralift 2. That's not quite my department, though I hope one day it might be. Instead, I'm going to show you how to make a rudimentary data pack that lets you modify recipes and loot tables, which will then act as a gateway for you to become even better at toying with this side of Minecraft in the future, allowing you to go on to do greater things. Or you could just make the elytra craftable, I don't mind either which way. All I hope is that this video is of some use to you so that you may get the most out of your Minecraft experience. Okay, let's do it. In your Minecraft launcher, pressing the folder button next to any of your installations will open your Minecraft file directory, found in the app data folder. Alternatively, you can get here by writing percentage app data percentage in your Windows search bar, and then clicking dot Minecraft at the top of the folder. Now that you're here, if you go to the versions folder and then enter any of your installed game versions, you'll find a jar file named after said game version. Because jar files are actually really just fancy zip files, if you open them with a file archiver, like WinRAR or 7-zip, inside you'll find, besides a million useless Java classes that you don't need to worry about, the assets and data folders. For now, click and drag the data folder out to somewhere easy to access later, like your desktop. This is where the fun begins. Okay, first things first, you're going to want to make a new folder, named whatever your data pack's going to be. More quickly than right-clicking and clicking New Folder, you can instantly make a new folder by pressing Ctrl, Shift, and N all at once on your keyboard. Please remember this, as it will exponentially speed things up later. I'm going to call this, for no reason at all, Resurvival Retooling. That's the name of the data pack I used to make my mod pack work, which I would really appreciate if you checked out. Now that you have your main folder made, go into it. You're going to need three things. Well, uh, two required things anyway, but you'll want your data pack to have an icon, right? Add any 1x1 one one PNG in here, and name it pack.png. Then it'll show up in the in-game data pack menu whenever you apply it. Sweet! By that I mean the file has to be called pack, with the file extension being .png. It shouldn't be called pack.png.png, you get me? Okay, now that that's done, first actual thing you need to do is make sure that you have a pack.mc meta file. This is a basic text type data file that defines both the description of your data pack and the version of it. You can make one by creating a new text file, then renaming it to pack with the file extension .mc meta. 
You need to do this so as to define the compatibility of the pack with the version of Minecraft it's made for. For the most part, data packs that are modifying basic components like recipes and loot tables can span many different Minecraft versions without issues, so this is more so relevant for more complicated stuff like biome data packs, which change consistently and drastically between different game versions. Either way, it doesn't hurt to make sure the pack format number is as correct as you can make it. You can find the pack format numbers and their versions correlating on the wiki, but for the sake of your convenience, here it is on screen too. The last thing you need to make in this root folder is, of course, your data folder. Once that's made, hop inside and we shall proceed to the next step. Now that you're in here, I think it's a good time to remind you that we have all of Minecraft's data ready to be toyed with. This is exceedingly useful, as it gives us a template to copy the file paths we need so that we may overwrite what we want to overwrite. I could have thought that out a little better. So, let's say, hypothetically, I wanted to, for the sake of argument, make it so that sticks aren't craftable from planks. Why would I want to do this, you ask? Because I hate you. As you can see from Minecraft's data directory, the stick recipe is located in Minecraft Recipes, and there it is, stick.json. So, in our own data pack, we make the very same directory. Control shift n Minecraft, Control shift n Recipes, then we make a new JSON file called stick.json. How do we do that? Well, .jsons are just fancy text files. So all we need to do is right-click, new text document. Or, as I learned right now, <laughs> right-click, W, T. Wowza! Then, highlight the entire name, including the .text extension, and name the file stick.json. It'll ask if you want to change the extension, which you do. Make sure it does not have text at the end, or it won't work. Right, so you can technically do this for a notepad, but I would strongly recommend getting Visual Studio Code to do this, as that program it can actually check for errors in not only JSON files, but also Minecraft-specific JSON files if you install certain plugins. To be clear, I made you make a new blank JSON file just for the practice of it, as there will be a test at the end of the video. I'm lying, of course. No. There'll just be times where it'll be handy to do that, especially for original items and recipes and the like. But for now, to make things faster, you can just go into the Minecraft data you extracted earlier and copy-paste the stick JSON from over there. Haha! <laughs> Once you've done that, open that sucker up! So, straightforwardly, if you want to just remove a recipe outright, all you need to do is delete the entire contents of the file and save it. Now, the game is reading your new blank file instead of its own filled file. This is how data pack overrides work. With this information in mind, you can do all sorts. Want to add a recipe that lets you smelt rotten flesh into leather? Go grab any smelting recipe, throw it into your pack's recipe folder, change the name into something new, if the file name is original, it won't override any vanilla recipes, but instead show up alongside them. And then just go inside and replace the relevant components. So the ingredient is rotten flesh, and the result is leather. Save that, and wham bam, thank you ma'am, it's done. Wanna make it so beds don't drop themselves without utilizing silk touch? Well, firstly, you're awful. But secondly, you can do that. Make a loot tables directory, a block subdirectory, paste all the bed files in there, and start tampering with one of them. Admittedly, I'm not the best when it comes to loot table syntax, so I find the most straightforward method is to go and find a block that does function in the manner I need mine to, and then copy paste and edit it for my purposes. In this instance, I'm going to steal some contents from the grass blocks loot table, and then also add a function that randomly chooses to drop between one and three wool. So now, if our tool has silk touch, we'll get our white bed. Otherwise, it will drop white wool. Voila! There's actually a web app that lets you far more easily write loot tables amongst other data files called Misode. It's on GitHub and visualizes each field in a handy dandy GUI like so. I'll link it in the description below. Data packs work for mods too. If you've spent any amount of time at all in the modding scene, you'll have probably found modders telling you that their mods are configurable through data packs. Before, you would have gone, but how do I make a data pack? Well, now you know. So stop asking. God. Here's an example. Mining Master. Hey, I came up with that. Mining Master adds enchanting gems to the underground, in addition to a new workstation called the Gem Forge, alongside adding additional functionality to the 
Sniffing table? <laughs> Sniffing table. In addition to regular old crafting, that's three different kinds of recipes to work with. Lucky you though, they're all entirely modifiable and addable to with data packs. In my packs data folder, add the namespace of the mod whose data you're editing, in this case, Mining Master. Then, just like the Minecraft jar file, open it, rummage through the data section, and pull the relevant file directories into your own data pack. Then, simply delete the files you don't need, edit the ones you want to change, and if you so desire, add your own recipes to your liking. Here, I'm adding a recipe that turns the Never Star into an enchanting gem that gives mending to any item I apply it to in a smithing table. Pretty cool. If I want to edit the spawn rate of any given enchanting gem, all I need to do is copy this while gen placed feature directory, delete what I don't need, edit the Iolite's JSON file, and then I can change the minimum and maximum heights it will spawn, in addition to making it 100 times more common. Pretty sweet. These same principles go for grindstone recipes from Spelunkery, mixing recipes from Create, and any other mod that adds new recipe types through data. You can add as many as you like. This is, of course, as they say in technical terms, baby stuff. This is more or less just modifying existing data from Minecraft and its mods. If you really start delving into the capabilities of data packs, you can do so much more. Mobs with custom abilities, fun challenge modes, new building tools, and as mentioned before, entire biomes and dimensions. You can take this stuff far if you really want to. And there are numerous creators and guides out there that you can follow if you do want to take that next step. I really like Legitimus personally, you should check him out for more. And if you want to see more from me, you should subscribe and hit the bell for immediate upload notifications. I've got a whole slew of both tutorials and mod showcases and reviews coming up. It's going to be fun! If you want to support me financially so that I may continue making these, please consider donating to my Patreon too. I'm now going to be giving shoutouts to my troll tier patrons, the one and only of which at the moment is the lovely 8-Bit Ninja. Thank you so much for feeding me! If you'd otherwise like to be a greater part of the Infernal Sphere, Cube, Trapezoid, you can join the Infernal Studios Discord server. It's nice and fun and you'll have a dandy old time. Alright, that's all for now. Bye bye